to the mountains and know this truth. God, our help, is stronger, larger, and mightier than the mightiest nation. God's help is stronger than any trouble this word world can throw our way. Good morning. Let's try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. I thought I was the only one sleeping here this morning. Announcements for this week. Lenten Bible study will continue on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. We are studying the seven words. So far, it's very interesting. We had both sessions were very enjoyable and a lot of good conversation going on. Joint uh, the ministerium is putting on a cantata on March 29th at 7.30 at St. Augustus Lutheran Church. It's called It Is Finished. And we have Allison and Hannah singing as part of the choir. So if we can go to support them, that would be great. Um, I'm trying to find out when their weekly Lenten service are, are being held at and at which church, which week. Did anybody get a schedule or know a schedule from the, um, supposedly uh, I was to get a schedule, but I think they forgot me because I didn't get one. They just told me meet at the church and, and robe up and we'll walk in together, but they didn't tell me what church to be at and when. So we will see. We will see how that is. Also, in your bulletins, you will find a candy order form. We're going to try something new. We're going to join in with uh, Otterbein, and we're going to have a Easter candy sale. They're going to be made by us, homemade. I got a list of volunteers that said they would like to help. But we do have a few people who have done it before, so we're not totally going to be lost in doing this. The prices are relatively uh, good to what is being sold by other organizations that are already made candy. Um, the proceeds will benefit missions. So we wanted to try and sell them. Pickup I have is April 1st from 10 to 12 at Otterbein, or we can pick them up right here at Palm Sunday after church. We'll have the orders here. Um, I know Click is April 1st, so you don't have to worry about Click. I will be at Click. I'm just going to split myself in half that day, and half of me go to Otterbein, the other half will be at Click. But I can't give up Click. That's, that's too important. The 20th, I believe it's the 20th of March, will be our trustee and ad council meeting. Am I correct? Sounds right. Okay. Yesterday, two of us were at Tools for Ministry. What a exciting time that was. We all got there, got into their auditorium, and they said after we have brief devotions, we'll go on to our classes. Well, that's nice. I knew what class I had signed up for, and nobody knew what classrooms to go to, though. <laughs> Slight mistake. So they had to read off what classrooms we are, and in between reading off what classrooms we were in, they were also telling us what classes were canceled or what classes were switched around to other rooms. We were about a half an hour behind the whole day. We were to get out at 1. I think we got out close to 2, closer to 2. Uh, Cindy and I took both the same courses. It was uh, getting the church on the web and how to build a good website. Loads 
of great information came from that. Um, the fellow who instructed it, I myself personally talked to him yesterday and asked him to please come and do an audit of our website and also help us and create, he has great ideas. He is a web designer and does it for churches. So we're going to bring him in to give the same knowledge that Cindy and I had gotten. And we are also going to get a hold of the slides from the whole presentation, both classes, and we'll call the communications team together when we ha have all, this, all the slides and the communication team will sit down, watch the slides, and get the same presentation that Cindy and I got yesterday, minus some of the questions that were asked. But I think we wrote them down with the answers. Did I miss anything, Cindy, on that? Nope. nope. Very good day. Very good day, but I was very hungry when it came to an end. <laughs> they gave us bagels, but they were about... <laughs> You know those little packs of cream cheese? There was some left over because the bagel was that small. <laughs> but anyway, any other announcements we need to know? Did you have any announcements for? Uh, we have a script next week if anybody's interested. Script next week. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Blood drives tomorrow. Blood drives tomorrow. That if you can give the gift of life, let's do it. I unfortunately am not able to give the gift of life, but I came in late, so I don't know. Did you announce click for this Saturday? I did not announce for this Saturday. Click is this Saturday. I know I announced April's, so I'm just right. a month ahead of time. <laughs> click is this Saturday and it's gonna be magnetic. Magnetic. Just think of all we can do with that. So if you have any little ones out there that want to have a fun time, bring them in. It's a chance for adults, too, to be young again. So we're going to have a fun time with doing that. And our reels that we put up on Facebook, people have really been liking them from Click. So we're going to keep doing that. Any other announcements? If not, let us start off with our praise. All right, so we have three new songs for March today. We're gonna start with number 204. We have come to worship you. is a redeemer.
this morning is number two, Change My Heart, Oh God. God calls with a blessing. Our help is in God. God calls with a promise. Our help is in God. God calls through our questions. Our help is in God. God calls through the Spirit. Our help is in God. Let us share the passing of the peace. Our opening hymn is number 369, Blessed Assurance. Join in the unison prayer. 
spirit of help and hope, be with us this day. Breathe into our prayers and praise. Breathe into our spirits. Breathe into our worship with your promise of help, your promise of rebirth, and your promise of blessing. In faith and trust we pray. Amen. Any youth here today? Oh, wow. We need to fill up the church so we have some little less echo. Good morning. Who do you have today? A frog. What do you have? Board. All right. Question for you. Do you know the Bible verse John three sixteen? No? How many know John three sixteen out there? All together we're going to say it for them. Listen carefully. For Did you hear that? Could you hear that? What does it tell you? I've heard that before, but I can't recognize names and numbers in the Bible. John 3.16. That's, that's, you know what that stands for? It stands for the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Okay? It's always the name of the book the chapter that you're reading from, and then the verses. So, we're going to talk about John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Are you part of the world? I think so. Love their answers. Are you part of the world? Yes. Yes. Okay, so God loves you. He loved you so much that he sent his son to come here on earth to show us. Not to yell at us and tell us. See, the time Jesus came, this world was in chaos. And God sent him so that we can learn from him. And the reason, what else does it say? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. Am I correct? I'm so used to doing it fast that when I slow it down, it's like, did I miss something? What's the next verse say? Condem- what does the word condemn mean? What's the word condemn mean? You know what the word condemn mean? That's a big word, isn't it? You know, my mind is going to, can either one of you spell that word? <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. Because I think I'd stumble over it a little bit. Now I got everybody thinking. They're thinking in their minds. Can I spell the word condemn? What does condemn mean? Anybody? What does the word condemn mean? Punish. Punish. Put down. Condemn mean is a bad word in my Bible. It's not a good thing. But God's love is so powerful. Did you ever make a volcano? Did you ever do that experience, experiment of making a volcano? 
you take some vinegar and you take some baking soda and it, okay and it pops and it goes everywhere isn't that fun explosive Well, who cleans it up? We're not at the cleanup point yet. So we get this experiment, and it's going out. The volcano, it's overflowing with this, we'll call it lava, but it's overflowing. Now take that picture and imagine God and all, all the love he has for all of us. He wants to push it out. So it's so explosive in him, he just, it just gushes from him and comes forth and goes into each and every one of us. That's God's. That's God's love. Can we love each other like that? Do you love your sister? I ask hard questions. Do you love your sister? I will right, make it easy. Do you love your mom? That's a real quick answer. Do you love your brother? Sometimes. We get honest answers. Do you love your mother? Most of the time. Most of the time. Do you love your dad? Yes. You get the big yes. Do you love your dad? Yeah. Yeah. See how our answers differ? But no matter what you say to God, God's going to give you the same explosive love each and every time. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing the youth to us today. When we see the youth, we see future. When we hear their answers, yes, we may chuckle, but we know you gave them the voice, and you gave us the knowledge to pass on to them. We thank you for all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may go to Sunday school. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your coming out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Lift up your eyes to the hills. Let us join in the Apostles' Creed found in your hymnal on 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Oh God, open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and our hearts to receive what you say to us today. Amen. Please stand if you're able for the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson today is taken from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler among the Jews who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, I assure you, the most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, I assure you, the most solemnly say to you, unless one is born with water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised that I have told you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be possible? Jesus replied, you are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not know nor understand these things. Assure you, most I say to you, we speak only of what we know and testify about what we have. If I, tell, or if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe and trust? If I tell you of heavenly things, no one has gone into heaven, but there is one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the <clears throat> serpent in the desert, so, most, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son, his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but that he, the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Born anew. That's the title of this sermon. Born anew. What is this? Don't what? Don't do this? takes care of my fun for today. <laughs> Did you see the reaction you had? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here today. I have the bottle of soda here, and I shook it up and shook it up, and I, you know, I wanted to do my experiment and open it up and see what would happen. Good thing you stopped me, though because this liquid wouldn't look too good on my white shirt. And the cleaning lady would have me in here cleaning. But I still want to shake it. Anybody else want to shake it? No? Two things, I have trust this lid's going to be on here tight. So when you shake up this bottle and you told me not to open it, why? Pressure builds up inside. When I would take and open that, it would just go everywhere. Okay, 
So I won't open it, because we all know what would happen. But I want you to understand that God's love is just like this. His love for you, for me, for everybody. He's just bursting. He has like pressure built up inside him, just like this bottle does. And his love just pushes out and goes everywhere. Is that not what we're supposed to do? Take our love and gush it out. Push it out for all to see. Is that easy? God does it with self-giving love. And we look at the Trinity, the, the three, the three in one, God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the three of them. They love each other so deeply and have such a great connection that you got all three of them bursting with love. And they want to share that love with each and every one of us. There's no fear in them. No insecurity. They are together. God's love is so great that he wanted to share it beyond himself. So God created the universe. God's creation is simply and bubbling, overflowing with his love. Just take and look at, his, at the world around you each and every day. You see something different. Each and every day, his love comes bursting out. So next time you open up a bottle and it accidentally sprays on it and you just pray I hadn't come to your place and shook it up. Just remember, that's God's love. But did you ever see someone open up a champagne bottle and the cork goes flying out because it's under that pressure? Think of God's love coming out. You just release God's love and it's overflowing everywhere that you want it to be. His love bursts forth it gushes forward, just like the cork will go out of the bottle. Or if I open this bottle right now, just think of God's creation. Think when you see that, how much God loves you. He loves you so much he can't contain, contain it. Do you love anything that much that you just can't contain your love? We're going to look at a story today from the Gospel of John. A Pharisee named Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus at night. And they had a very interesting conversation. Nicodemus knew that Jesus was distinctive and unique. He confesses to Jesus. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with them. Jesus responded, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now the word again in Greek, if you translate that several different ways, it can mean again, it can mean anew, or it can mean from above. And this is where I like to tell people, read different translations of the Bible. The Bible was interpreted by man. God's words that are interpreted by man. And a great example is the word again. That in Greek, you can translate it three different ways. So when you read different translations, you get three different interpretations from whoever wrote that version. Great way to look and study God's word. So Nicodemus took Jesus to, to Jesus to mean again, as in a literal sense, again. How can someone be born when they are old, he asked. 
Surely they cannot enter the second time into the mother's womb to be born. I'm glad not. I'm glad that did not, and Jesus straightened him out. He said to be born again, he means to be anew. A rebirth from within, to have the Holy Spirit in you. Jesus said, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Water and spirit refers to baptism. Now that's not saying you're not going to enter into heaven if you're not baptized. That is saying because different churches believe in different ages to be baptized. Some could be baby baptism, infant baptism. Some are when they're older children. Some get baptized as adults. But what happens to the person who happens to die before they could be baptized? I myself believe they go to heaven. In baptism, we were buried with Christ and born anew. We were united with Christ in his death and raised from the water with him in his resurrection. Our life is completely renewed in baptism, which is why it is a sacrament. After baptism, our focus locks on to the crucified and resurrected Christ, who now dwells in us. Christ dwells in us with the Holy Spirit. Feel it. Learn the feeling. Know it. We are daily crucified as we pick up our cross and follow him. But we also are daily resurrected in life, in love, in joy. We are immersed into the life of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When this happens, we have entered the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus speaks about. Wow. Just think of that. Wow. And it happens now in our life. Nicodemus' answer was, how can this be? It's clear that Nicodemus did not understand being born again or being born anew like we do today. We had the benefit of 2,000 years of church history, biblical studies. We have an advantage to that. And we have the advantage of having the Holy Spirit living in us. He asked a good question. How can it be that we are born anew? How can it be that we're born anew? Jesus responds by pointing to his own crucifixion. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Jesus is referring to the story in the book of Numbers, which Nicodemus would have been familiar with. There is a time when a poisonous snakes were killing many of the Israelites. Remember, the Israelites were in the wilderness among dangerous creatures. To remedy this, in Numbers chapter 21, verses 8 to 9, it says that the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on top of a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they would live. Jesus is saying this is the first step in experiencing this renewal in your life, of being born anew. The first step in this transformation, Jesus is comparing himself to the bronze snake. Jesus knew he would one day be lifted up on a cross for all to see. And anyone who looks at Christ on the cross receives life. Just look at Christ on the cross. 
and you'll receive life. Now we come back to where we started. Do you remember this bottle of soda that I placed here for everyone to see? How God's love is like that soda, how it will gush out forward because it's meant to be shared. God loved his world, this world so much that he gave Jesus to us. And Jesus endured the cross. And what's even more mind-blowing is God loves us even when we hate him back. God loves this world, this God-hating world. And we live in it today. He loves his world, his creation so much. And he loves absolutely everyone that Jesus came and died for absolutely everyone. He didn't come to die just because you see God. He came for everyone. Everyone. He came and died because we saw him and loved him. But when Jesus on that Friday, when they were yelling, crucify him, crucify him. They were God haters. And that is not God's nature, to hate the people back. He loved them. And he followed through with what he had sent Jesus to do. See, God's core nature is self-giving love that I talked about last week. Everything God does flows from that core. Part of being born anew is seeing our Father in a brand new eyes for who He truly is. He truly is love. Colossians says we thought we were God's enemies, but that was only in our minds. God's love is God's, God loves this God-hating world. God-hating world, and Jesus died for it. Imagine what God is thinking about today. Will he drag all people to him? A huge part way, we partner with God in this mission. This is love our own enemies. Be Christ-like. We will consider no person our enemy. No one is our enemy. Because God would never consider us his enemy, even when we hated him, even when we didn't understand him. As a child may say to his parents, I hate you. For they don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're saying. And what does the parent usually come back and say to them? Them. I love you. Just as God is our Father saying, you may hate me if you want. That's free will. But you're not going to change my mind. I still love you, no matter what. Be born anew. Why does God love this God-hating world? Because Jesus came to save all the world and not condemn it. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Maybe this is something distinctive and unique that Nicodemus needed to hear. Nicodemus was part of the God-hating world. Pharisees, and we know that the Pharisees' vie was not to save the world, but to condemn the world. They were more condemning than loving. And because of that, they had it backwards from God. And they modeled to people an angry God who demanded you to follow rules. Jesus gave off a completely different vibe. And John, the gospel writer, Nails it right. 
Jesus was the opposite of the Pharisees. Jesus demonstrated a God who was completely upside down from their understanding. God does not condemn the world, but came to save the world through Jesus. How great that is. That's the kind of salvation the world needs. The world needs to be healed. The world needs to be restored. It needs to be made whole again. And this is why Jesus came, to do exactly that. Have you been born anew? If not, would you like to be? Have you been baptized? If not, would you like to be? Do you see God is angry and condemning? Or do you see him as loving and saving? Amen. Before we begin our next hymn, if everyone online has a... Uh, prayer request, you may write it down. Next hymn is What Wondrous Love This Is, number 292 in the hymnal.
seated. We now come to the time in the service for our joys, our concerns, our prayer requests. I will start off this morning by asking prayer for uh, Judy Hummel, who is recuperating in the hospital. So our prayers will go out to you. Hi, Judy, I know you're online. Isn't it fantastic that we can be in the hospital and still join our church? That's great to know that she's with us this morning. At least I believe she's with us. She told me she was going to be. And um, got another prayer request from Barb Smith for her daughter, Julie. Julie is in the hospital right now. Uh, God knows what the concerns are for Julie, so we're just going to pray for complete healing. And we want to pray for Ken Hampton for health issues. Uh, we'll put him on our prayer list. We have another one of those who feel unworthy of God's sinful love, infinite love. If I read it up here right, I can read it. May they find love, peace, acceptance, and welcoming in God's church. All those, no matter if you feel unworthy, you're welcomed here. We open our doors, we have plenty of seating. Come, help me fill this church and find that God's infinite love. Any other prayer requests we have out there? Okay. If not, let us go into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being such a loving Father, for pushing forth so much love so much love. You love us so much that you look past all our things that we do that are not too pleasing to you. But you are such a loving parent that you accept us for who we are because we were all made in your image, Lord. Lord, we pray for Judy, for complete healing. We pray for Barb's daughter, Julie and for complete healing. Lord, we pray for Ken and complete healing. Lord, if it is your will, bring complete healing to all who are sick this day. Lay your healing hand on them and let them feel your love. Lord, we pray for all who feel like they're not loved in this world. Help us and guide us to show them how your love covers everyone, everyone. Lord, there is so much that we hear in the news of how this world of yours is going. Help us, Lord, guide us on how to keep this world the way you want it. Let your will be done with it. Wake us up, Lord. Wake us up that we make this world a better place to live for all. We pray for all in the military. We pray for all our government. No matter who our leader is, we pray for them. From our president on down to our governors, to our mayors, to our school boards and so forth all the way down all elected officials Lord may you be with them and guide them for your will to be done for this is your world Lord Lord we ask that you help all those who are suffering from 
gunshots in this violent world that we live in. Help us, guide us on how we can help others. Lord, we thank you for your gift of your son that you gave us. We pray all this through Jesus' name, and now we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the power, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now do the hymn of preparation. Let us break bread together. Verse 3. It's number 618 in the hymnal. United Methodist believes in an open table. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you may take part in the communion. In your bulletins is an insert for the great Thanksgiving in early Lent. Lord be with you. No. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He's right. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failed and your love remained steadfast. When the rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made a covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When, you were forsook your, when people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard you, your still small voice. And so, with the people, your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, when you gave him to save us from our sin. Your Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to life, but presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and you exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts. During these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted 
and grace to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks. Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. As a holy and living sacrifice in the union with Christ offering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit as on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your, Holy, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Please stand for our prayer of dedication. Our offering plate is over here. You may place your offering in as you're leaving today if you've not already done so. Those online may go to our website to place their offering. God, our help and our hope, bless these gifts that they may bring us the need and hope for the despairing. Bless us this day that our very lives may be given hope for your world. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift High to Cross, number 159. this benediction go forth just like this bottle of soda and explode your love throughout the world amen I gotta keep this separated